When I first started travel vlogging, I'd go out and film stuff, and then I'd kind of just sit on the footage for a while. I would watch it later, get excited about editing, then get overwhelmed. I just didn't know where to start or how to make it all come together in an interesting and watchable way. So it's like a fork. It's a fork from back in the day. Learning how to edit travel vlogs required a deep understanding of the fact that my collection of clips were not my actual vlog. And the trick I really had to learn, the key to turning my footage into a publishable vlog, was about working with what I had, even if it wasn't great, and supplementing it with additional elements to make it entertaining and complete. And that is what today's video is about, how to edit travel vlogs. Today I'm showing you the exact formula I use to organize my vlog footage, balance the talking parts with the cinematic visuals, add excitement, emotion, and edit together a final piece of content. This video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound, which is a huge library of royalty-free music and sound effects that you can add to your YouTube videos. Grab my special link in the video description to check out this amazing platform and stick around because I'm sharing lots of next level tricks on how to use music and sound to elevate your vlogs. So, you shot your vlog, now what? First, you need to gather up all the cameras you used, maybe even your phone, and copy all of those video files into one specific folder on your computer. This is a sacred ritual that should be performed immediately after filming, even if you're not ready to start editing. To get my video files from an SD card onto my Mac, I use this handy dongle thing with an SD card reader. I will link to it below. And to get any iPhone clips over to my computer, I will use Apple's AirDrop, although there are a number of other ways to do that as well. This is not only a way to get everything organized and in one place before editing, it's also a way to back up your files so you can then delete them from your SD card or your phone to regain that space, especially if you are continuing to vlog. So I've got everything here and I'm going to name this folder Manatee Springs. This was a camping trip I went on with my parents and my little girl, and I'll use the editing process for this vlog as the example for this video tutorial about editing a vlog. And then of course, once you create this folder, I highly suggest you back it up in a second location, like an external hard drive or in cloud storage. So now that you've got your vlogging footage folder, you will set up your files in your editing software. I am using Final Cut Pro, but you can definitely apply most of these techniques to other pieces of software like iMovie, Adobe Premiere, or DaVinci Resolve. But for setup and Final Cut, I'll just say File, New Library, name it, and then New Event. I usually use one library and one event per vlog, but you can use the events to further break things down within a vlog if you wanna do like each day or something like that. And now that we have the event, we can either use this little arrow to open the import box, or I like to just go straight over to the folder and drag and drop all of those video files right there into the event where they will copy over and then arrange themselves chronologically. And now you can take it one step further and create a new project. So the project is like the edit itself. And I never jump straight into the vlog edit because I like to be super organized before I do, so I will name this first project Rough Cut. Now, this is the super fun part when it comes to editing a vlog. You get to watch back everything you filmed, relive the experience, and hopefully find those epic shots that you're really proud of. So there are different ways to do this. The way that I learned in this Final Cut Pro certification course I took back in the early 2000s was to watch the footage here, set your in and out points using the I and O keyboard commands, and then hit W to just pop the bits down into the timeline. But for some reason, I strongly prefer to just highlight everything, chuck it into the timeline, then clean things up from there. I just think it's easier to decide what I don't want than what I do want. So basically in this step, you're just doing an initial pass and deciding which parts of the clips are keepers and which ones should be trashed. So to do this, you can grab the ends of the clips and sort of wheel them in. Or you can use the blade tool by hitting B, chop it up, hit A, select, and then delete. And generally speaking, my clips are a big mix of A-roll and B-roll, and I cut them very differently. So for the A-roll, I will go through and listen to myself talk, cutting out any of the parts where I lose track or mess up. I've learned to film several takes of things just in case the audio is messed up in one or one clip is less rambly in others than others. I like to have the option of which one to choose. 
And then for the B-roll clips, I will go ahead and mute the audio since these are either gonna cover a part where I'm talking or they will be used in a cinematic sequence that is cut to music. Next, I'll probably apply a slow motion effect to anything that I shot in 60 frames a second and I want to slow down. So I'll just select the clip and say automatic speed. That's how you do it in a nutshell. And then once I do this, I can really scrub through that footage and hone in on those killer smooth shots and decide which ones are best and which ones just need to be eliminated. This is where I'll also add any speed ramping or obvious effects that I know I want to use. Like for this shot, I knew I was getting a static shot of a campsite setup that I would speed up later, so I'll select it and say fast 20 times and then maybe trim out some parts that are just boring to kind of make it like a cool little transitional segment. And I don't generally get into color grading here quite yet, but sometimes I'll correct exposure or color balance if it's way out of whack, just to see if a shot is salvageable or if it just needs to go. So overall, the goal in the rough cut is just to play and be creative, clean things up, trim things down, and make it watchable to you, the editor, so that you can get an idea of what the full vlog might kind of look like and what you may need to add or subtract. If I get really into it, I might start editing the cinematic sequence stuff right here in the rough cut, or at least pairing clips together and creating transitions but if I'm not feeling inspired just yet, then I will skip to the next step because the next step is going to really inspire me to start that creative edit. Music is a huge part of vlogging and video in general. The moment you add music to a video, it makes everything come alive. It adds feeling, it builds excitement, it just does something to the visuals that make the entire editing process and final project so, so exciting. Quick side story, I was actually a photography major in college and what inspired me to move from photography to video, the number one thing that attracted me to video was the ability to incorporate music. I just love music in general and although I don't actually create it, I love that I get to work with it professionally in some way. But of course, finding good music to use in your YouTube videos is tricky. And if you're trying to develop a regular vlogging workflow, you have to have a go-to resource to grab good copyright-free music again and again and again. Now I mentioned this video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound and I am thrilled to work with them because I have been using their music in my YouTube videos exclusively for years. You guys have been hearing it if you guys have been watching. Their music library offers over 35,000 music tracks and 90,000 sound effects. And the music is hip, trendy, and just fun to listen to. I listen to it around the house all the time. Not so much the sound effects, but definitely the music. Epidemic has music for every mood, style, situation, and also sound effects for anything that you might encounter while vlogging, whether it's sounds of nature, or the passing of a vehicle, or the pouring of a glass of wine. And when you add these sound effects to a vlog, it subconsciously heightens the interest of the viewer and draws them in because we are multi-sensory beings and the visuals alone are not always enough. Music and sound effects can make or break your videos and the care you take in adding these elements is really going to pay off in the final piece. So I'm gonna start here by downloading and adding some sound effects to the clips that I might like to use just to see how much better the sound effects can make them. When are we gonna be at home? What do you see? What do you see? Yeah. So the way my vlogs are generally laid out, as I mentioned, is toggling between A-roll, where I'm just telling you what's going on, and then B-roll, or cinematic sequences, where I'm showing you some amazing visuals, maybe changing from one scene to the next, or just letting you be in the moment with me through my camera lens. For those A-roll parts, I'll need to find music that is chill and not too distracting from what I'm saying, just true background music, and then the fun sequences are where I can choose something more exciting with some beat drops and changes of pace because I can edit the video in a way that will match and kind of like support that music. Exciting music with epic beat drops is fun, but if you don't have the visuals to match them, then they can feel a bit awkward. Yeah. So let me take you now to my musical happy place, Epidemic Sound. If you check out the genres, you will find just about everything here. They have songs to match specific situations or destinations like an amusement park. I used something like this in my Finland vlog to go and meet the real Santa Claus. Kind of rare, but when you need a song like that, you need a song like that. 
Or you could go over to the countries and find traditional music to reflect the vibe of your travels. I definitely did a lot of this type of stuff in my early travel vlogging days. But if you're not trying to find something too specific, I think it's better to start with moods. Generally, if I'm just talking to the camera and I don't need a lot of drama in the music, I'll usually start with dreamy. After choosing a mood, you can further categorize things, which is so helpful because there's a big difference between dreamy hopeful and dreamy sad. And for this, I'm gonna choose Dreamy Smooth. Another trick to narrow things down for background music is to select vocals and then instrumentals, which eliminates all vocals. There's definitely a time and a place for vocals, but you definitely don't want to use them when you or anyone else is trying to talk on camera. So now that we've narrowed all of this down, I'm gonna see a lot of the soft house here, which is a genre I love, soft house and also deep house. And I'll just start listening. And then while it's playing, I'll pull up Final Cut and just kind of let my footage run to see what feels like it might be a good initial match. Sometimes the song is really close, but not quite perfect. And my favorite feature offered by Epidemic for this very situation is this little icon here. Click on this guy and it's gonna pull up a whole selection of other songs that are similar to that first one, but slightly different. So that is Epidemic Sound. It really is the most comprehensive library of music and sounds I have ever found. And I just love playing around with it, listening to everything they have and using their music to level up my content. It's also very affordable for YouTubers to use. You can pay monthly and it's well worth the time you save trying to find royalty free music elsewhere. If you'd like to try it out, just grab my special link right here. You can grab it in the video description below to give it a try and leave me a comment with your favorite genre or song from Epidemic Sound so I can give them a list Listen and hear what you like best. And now that I've selected and downloaded a few songs from Epidemic Sound to try out, I can just drag those mp3 files into Final Cut and see and hear how things are working out. The presence of the songs might inspire me to play around with the edit in the rough cut some more, or to prepare for the next step, I can go ahead and control click on the entire rough cut project and then say duplicate project as, and I will name it Manatee Springs Vlog. So the reason I duplicated that rough cut before I continue working on it is so I can really start making final decisions about what is going to be deleted and I still have a semi-organized rough draft to go back to if I need to revisit something I considered initially. So in this vlog cut, the first thing I'm really gonna do is consider my storyline and remove anything that doesn't support it. For example, this was an episode of Vlog With Me, where I take you behind the scenes vlogging and talk about the gear I'm using and how I'm using it and how I'm filming things in general. It's sort of like a vlogging tutorial disguised as a travel vlog. But what I don't do in the Vlog With Me series is get into details about the travel experiences themselves, like a traditional travel vlog might do. So I'm not telling you how to book the campsite or what camping gear to bring. So if that stuff happens to find its way in and distract from the real purpose too much, then I will cut those parts out. Or if I have some dialogue that I never really follow up with any um, supporting scenes, then I'll get rid of that lead in because sometimes when you're vlogging, you never really know what's gonna happen. So you'll start talking about something and then you'll end up not doing that thing. So you've gotta really just like figure out your storyline and leave only the things that are relevant. And if I have a talking sequence like this one, but I'm referring to something that happened earlier, I might stack some B-roll clips of that thing on top of the moment I was talking about it. And this is all planned in advance while I'm vlogging. So this technique is just to add more visual interest and show viewers exactly what I'm talking about if I wasn't able to talk about it the moment I filmed it. And this is exactly what I did in this video. It actually makes up most of the storyline, so it's a little bit different, but this one will be published soon, by the way, in case you're super curious about it. So the final vlog cut is where I'm really gonna start to cut together those cinematic sequences and cut them to the music, basically get all the music in place. So if I take this first song and slide it under the A roll, all I really need to do is lower the volume on the track, which I'll discuss more in a minute. But this next song I'll use on the more cinematic sequence, exploring the forest. And cutting visuals like this to a piece of music is literally my favorite part of editing. It's just so satisfying and fun. I don't know what it is about it, but I could just get lost in it and do it all day long. I kind of have to be careful. <laughs> 
So I'm gonna show you how I learned how to do it. It's how I do it sometimes, maybe not necessarily all the time, but the correct way to do it is to use the handy marker tool to mark the main beats in your music track. So what you can do is play the Epidemic soundtrack and listen for the beats, place your playhead there, and then just hit the M key to add the little marker. With some songs, the beats are very obvious visually in that waveform, so you can be sure to place your markers right there on the peaks. And with other songs with like multiple beat sequences, you might want to just close your eyes and listen and hit M as you hear those beats. And then you can control click to go down and delete the marker if you didn't exactly nail it. And then you can either sync up those marked points with your actual edit points. See how it kind of snaps to it right here, thanks to our little marker. Or you can mark the major motions or movements within your clip, like this movement right here, and then sync the music beats to those motions. And that's where things get really interesting. So you can get very creative with this and there really is no exact right or wrong way to do it. You may end up listening to the same two seconds of a song over and over again to get it right. But when you do, the whole thing will look so much more amazing than if you just put a bunch of clips right on top of a song with a bunch of beats and didn't take the time to really make it sync and really make it work together. Now, working with audio levels is a huge thing that is sometimes overlooked by new editors. And since we're talking so much about music and sound in this video, I have to give you a rundown of how it works because this too can make or break your video. You must balance your audio levels if you're gonna use music and sound effects in your video because you do not want a song playing at full volume that is competing with a person talking at full volume. As you hear right now, it's kind of annoying, isn't it? So to balance things out, I will first check the levels of my own speech by checking whether or not the green here is actively present, but also not hitting the red zone at all at any point. You do not want it in the red. So if it looks like this, I will lower this volume level down a bit. And if it looks like this, I might bump up the volume just a bit. And once that sounds good, I will take the music track and lower the volume down to anywhere from negative 18 to negative 28, although it really depends on the track and you kind of just have to listen, but you definitely want it down there. You want to hear the music just a bit when the volume of the person talking is at a good place, but it should not distract from the person talking. This is just the GoPro, I don't know, six, like my seven broke and I just gave up on getting new GoPros. So that's my latest action camera. And then the fun music track on the cinematic part can definitely be louder, but it's best if it's not much louder than the level of the person talking earlier. So overall, you just wanna maintain a consistency throughout the video so the viewer doesn't need to turn the volume down on the cinematic part because suddenly the music is way too loud. And this often means that you still need to lower the level on the audio track on that cinematic part just a bit. I think the best way to check the audio levels on your video is to put on headphones, close your eyes, and just listen to the entire thing without watching it. This will alert your senses to any major inconsistencies or parts that are annoying because they are too loud or too soft. So another one of my favorite final steps that will really make your videos pop is color grading. It is super important right now that you go through each clip and adjust the exposure if necessary. In Final Cut, you can hit Command-6 to tweak these exposure levels. For color balance, I'll click this guy here, say balance color, but that doesn't always look best. So my favorite alternative way is to go into that color board, select color wheels, scroll way down, and here you'll find a handy slider, which will take you between the yellow side of things and the blue side of things. So you can kind of decide what looks the most accurate. Of course, I could go way deeper into color correction and color grading, so just know that this is a really beginner overview. So once you've corrected things, you are ready to do the actual color grade. And the easiest way to do it without an intense study of color grading is by applying a LUT, which is like a gorgeous filter for your videos. LUTs are so much fun, kind of like music. I do have my own LUT packs available, so you can find them in the video description below. And I'm going to use my favorite LUT today, which I just made available called A Good Look. I love this LUT, it literally just is great on everything. And to apply this, I'll just go over here to Effects, drag over Custom LUT, then go up to the top, select the LUT, and I will also adjust the intensity of it with the slider, because these are kind of made to be strong, and you want to tone them down a bit to make them really fit your clip. 
And if you slide it back and forth, you can see the difference here in the color of the greens and also on the skin tone. I just think it looks cooler and prettier. So with the addition of the edits and the speed effects and the color grade and the sound effects and of course the music, I'm sure that you can take that vlog footage that you've been waiting around to edit and get started on it to make it come alive. Definitely check out Epidemic Sound. I'm sure that all of you will really enjoy using their music tracks and sound effects that they have available. And again, thank you Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. If you guys are hungry for more instruction on editing a cinematic sequence, then I'm going to pop in another video I created a while back all about editing a cinematic intro. So you can pick up some more tips to kind of round things out and I will see you guys in the very next video. Bye.